Nancy here, too, obviously. Um, I majored in English and secondary education as well, along with Woo! Noah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm student teaching right now at Urbana Middle School. Um, yeah, it's really nice to be in front of a bunch of people who are sitting still and <laughs> um, so yeah, next year um, I'm going to seminary in Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, getting my master's in theology. I'm really excited about it. Um, more than I'd love to develop curriculum to help people know God's word and know Him better. Um, so uh, after Kara talked to me about talking tonight and sharing a senior talk with Caleb, I was really really excited and seeing so many senior leaders before me come up and share about what the Lord had shown them. And I was praying about it, and I just felt like the Lord really put it on my heart to talk about prayer, ironically, because I was praying. Um, and so tonight I'm going to be sharing what the Lord has taught me um, through different experiences in my college career, through suffering, through joy, through relational problems, through family problems, through difficulties in classes, just great joys and great sorrows. The Lord has taught me so much about himself and so much about prayer through those circumstances. Um, so we're going to be in Jeremiah chapter 33. If you guys have your Bibles and want to open them, it's also going to be up on the screen. Um, give me verses 1 through 3. Um, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time, while he was still shut up in the court of the guard. Thus says the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call to me, and I will answer you, and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Okay, so before we get started, I want to give a little bit of context. I'm living on my context and knowing where we are in the Bible. Um, Right now, Israel, God's people, is going through a really difficult time. Israel's actually been divided into two kind of countries, Israel and Judah, and there's a lot of captivity and persecution and difficulties going on. Israel's really turned away from God. Things aren't really looking good. And Jeremiah is a prophet. He's a messenger sent by the Lord to help share with Israel things that the Lord has wants them to know, to communicate with them. Um, he was called the weeping prophet because of all the suffering and sorrow that he experienced. And I think that in itself is a huge indicator of prayer and why it's important. Prayer is important in suffering. Um, in this time, Jeremiah is shut up in the court of the guard, as verse, verse 1 says. Um, and I think this is just one tiny example of how the Lord is with us in suffering, and prayer is important in suffering. He comes to us, and that's not the only context for prayer, but I think it's a really big one. Um, so if we look at verse 2, it says, Thus is the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Um, in one of my classes, we talked a lot about this thing called code switching, which is um, the idea that when you talk to people, you kind of, subconsciously change the way you speak depending upon who you're talking to. So like if I'm talking to one of my professors, I'm going to speak really differently than if I was talking to like my roommate or my friend or my sister. Um, this idea that if you know who you're talking to, you speak in a different way. And I think that's kind of what we do with the Lord, except it should be conscious instead of subconscious. We need to know who we're talking to. Um, it says the Lord who made the earth, who wrote, the Lord who formed and established it. I think it's really sweet to think about that when we pray and when we talk to God, we're communicating to the same power that in Genesis 1 created and formed the earth and established it. I think I know in my own heart I'm so quick to forget that, so quick to not acknowledge who I'm speaking to. But it's really a sweet truth to remember that when we talk to God, that same power that conquered the grave, that created and formed the earth, he cares about the things that you want to talk to him about too. He cares about grades and tests and hard situations, good situations. That's the same God that we're talking to. He who made the star has the student who is us. And I think that is so sweet and so convicting at the same time. When I think about that, it increases my desire to pray and also just kind of makes me think more seriously about prayer. Like, why don't I communicate with the Lord more if I know I have access to that power? Um, Elizabeth Elliot is one of my spiritual heroes. She was a woman, she's still alive actually, but in the 1950s, she and her husband went as missionaries to Ecuador to serve the Alba Indians. And her husband was actually killed by the people he was trying to share the gospel with. And Elizabeth Elliot became very famous for actually going back and sharing the gospel with those people who had killed her husband. And they actually became saved, praise the Lord. And she has a really cool quote about um, the Lord and his sovereignty that I think is super relevant knowing the suffering that she experienced. She said, The Lord who created names and numbers the stars in the heaven also numbers the years on my head. He pays attention to the very big things and the very small ones. What matters to me matters to him, and that changes my life. I love that. What matters to me matters to him. I think it's so cool to think about who God is, and yet also in that same context, he really cares about you too, which is super cool and awesome. And that should encourage us to pray as well. And I think it also shows us that there's nothing too big or too small that we can bring to God. Um, he knows the number of hair in your head. He cares about the fact that you have a text in 30 minutes you haven't said before or that in your heart today. I don't know. Um, so if we look, keep moving on to verse 3. It says, call to me and I will answer you, and will tell you great and hidden things you have not known. Um, it's kind of a joke with me and my friends that my dad like answers the phone all the time. 
I called him and he's answering in the middle of movies, he's in the middle of like business lunches, he was in Washington DC at the White House a few weeks ago and he answered. And it's just like nuts. And sometimes it's funny because I'll call him and he'll be like, I can't call it, I'm busy. And I'm like, yeah, go answer, it's fine. And I remember I was talking to my mom about this and I was like, Mom, like, why does dad always answer? It's like kind of funny and I was like joking around and she was like very seriously, she was like, because he loves you a lot. And he like really cares about you. And I was thinking about that and I was like, Shoot, like my early father, who is a great, fantastic dad, but also imperfect, if he's able to communicate with me that well and show me that he cares about me through his communication with me, how much more does my heavenly father love me? Like, I don't need to like call God or like text God. Like, he's there. And I think it's so sweet to think about the fact that we have access to God in that way. Um, in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus encourages us to call out to God. He says that if you see him, you shall find him. I think that's a really sweet promise. There's promises like that all throughout scripture if you look at them, like a call and then a promise that follows it. And I think that's another encouragement too, to pray, that if you seek God, that you will find him. Um, it's not kind of like a 30 50-50 chance. Another huge thing that the Lord has shown me in college and that I think is really evident in this text is the fact that God initiates with us. Um, as I was praying and thinking about this, I realized like, prayer is never me trying to get God's attention. Like, hey, things are hard down here. I could really use your help right now, you know? Like, the Lord is always there, and he's always present in situations that are hard and that are difficult. And he's always the one who's initiated first. Prayer is a response, and I think that's really sweet to think about. He wants us to reach out to him. I think so many times that Satan tries to blind us with the lie that the Lord doesn't care, that he doesn't want to hear, but he actually really does, and he's there in the situation with you, which is such a sweet, tr such a sweet truth. And it's our choice whether or not we're going to respond to God by answering to him and crying out. Another really sweet truth that this passage brings out that I've seen is that we call to God and he answers us. Um, there's not much more security than that, than knowing that you can call out to someone and that he will always answer you. Um, I think one thing that's important to think about though, when we know that God answers us, the answer might not always be what we want, what we expect, or even something that we understand. I think um, understanding is a truth that I really grappled with. I think oftentimes in my life when I had something hard go on, I would cry out to God and pray to him, and then when I didn't understand his answer, I'd be frustrated. I'd be like, you didn't answer. It's like, the Lord does answer. Prayer is not guaranteed knowing what that looks like. Um, in James chapter 1, verse 5, it's one of my life verses that I really clung to in college. It says, um, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives to all generously without criticizing, it will be given unto him. And I just, I love that verse so much because it's like no matter what situation I'm in, I always know there's someone smarter than me who's going to take care of me, and that's God. And no matter what wisdom I might need or whatever I might be lacking, the Lord is going to grant that unto me, and that's a promise of scripture that I can claim. So I don't really need to be believing the lies that I'm insignificant or that this isn't going to work out because I know I have God, and I can bank on that because it's in scripture. Um, kind of along that point, too, in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 9 and 10, it talks about how God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Um, I think that's really important to think about when we're in prayer because I think oftentimes in my own life, I adapt this attitude of, okay, well, if I pray, then maybe God will understand my perspective and change things so that it works out for me. But God never tells us that things are going to be what we want, what we understand. But he does tell us that he knows what's going on and that he understands. But you think about it, it's a lot cooler because he's infinite and sovereign and powerful and I'm sinful and broken and not infinite. So I think that's something really important to think about. And it relates to two. The first thing that we talked about, the fact that we know who God is, that he created the earth, he should be all knowing and all powerful. And that's something to rejoice in. Um, thinking a little more practically about what does like praying look like and actively living out these truths look like. Philippians 4 talks about having joy in all circumstances and praying without ceasing. Actually, all of Philippians talks about rejoicing and suffering. And I think that's something that's so important to think about when we're praying. Like, we need to pray with an attitude of thanksgiving towards the Lord. I know in difficult circumstances, a lot of times I've called out to the Lord and asked Him for wisdom, asked Him for His loving passion to come upon me, but I've prayed with a spirit of bitterness and, with, and just hoping that my situation would change, not necessarily praying with thanksgiving towards God. And I was really convicted by some people in my life to start praying with more of a thankful attitude. And I noticed such a change in my heart when I started praying to God with an attitude of thanksgiving. Even when a situation is hard or difficult, thanking God for it, that he can meet me in it, has radically changed my life. And I really encourage you guys to think about things that you're going through with the spirit of thanksgiving instead of the spirit of despair or sorrow. Um, God doesn't call us to understand our situations. He doesn't even call us to love 
the situations that we go through, but he does call us to give thanks and to communicate with him. And I think that's super important to think about as we walk through college and start preparing to live life on our own and go out and do our own thing and follow what the Lord has for us. We need to hold on to that spirit of thanksgiving and that spirit of communication with the Lord because without it, we really can't spiritually grow in the church. Um, so again, really practically, kind of like narrowing down what I'm talking about, I think praying at all times and giving thanks is something that's super important. I know the idea of like praying at all times is kind of hard to wrap your mind around, and there's a lot of theological debate on what that even means. But I really think it means inviting God into our life, whatever that might look like, specifically in the idea of like speaking either out loud or mentally like speaking to God. I cannot tell you how much it has transformed my walk with the Lord to really invite him into my life and to have a spirit of thanksgiving and an attitude of thanks towards him. Um, even more, another area I've grown a lot in college is praying together with other believers. Um, this honestly say wasn't even something I really did that much until my senior year, and I really wish I had started it sooner because it radically not only changes your walk with the Lord, but your friendships. Like, when you pray with other people, it makes you closer to them and closer to God at the same time. And God's word promises that with two or more are gathered in his name, there he is present. That's like a guarantee of a really sensitive experiencing the Lord. And I think that's something that we really need to pay attention to. Um, I think a lot of times in life it's really easy to be like, oh, I'm praying for you. And like, that is not a bad thing. But why not just pray about it right there? Like, I think we need to start really actively having that attitude. Um, I know <laughs> sometimes my friends like make fun of me. They'll be in the grocery store or something. I'm like, oh, let's just pray about it. But like, why not? You know, God's right there. Um, so anyways, kind of to like wrap up these thoughts, and I know I've said a lot, and I could probably say, I know I could say a lot more, and I'm sorry if this is super overwhelming, but I just love it a lot. Um, I think it is so important not only to know how to pray and what to pray and why prayer is important, but just because it's something that we need for the rest of our lives. I really think that as Christians, we're facing a time of change not only in the world we live in, but also in the church. And I think that communicating with God and loving and knowing Him well is absolutely crucial for us to walk well with Him. I think that our generation really needs to understand and cultivate the spiritual discipline so that we can walk well with Jesus and know Him well, not even now, but 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, down the road. I don't think prayer is something that can really wait. I don't think it's something that we should be thinking about maybe in the future, or like, oh, I'll learn to do that once I graduate college. I think it's something we need to do now. And so, if I could encourage you guys to do one thing, and one thing that's really changed me throughout college, it would be just really talk to God, pray to Him about your prayer life, and examine it, and see how you can grow, and how He might want you to change or modify things. And also, I just really encourage you to uh, pray with other people, too. It's been super transformative for me, and I would really just be so encouraged if you guys would take that step of faith, too, and kind of start praying with one another. Um, so, yeah, it is my pleasure to introduce Irvin.